Great, thank you, Samira. Uh, good evening, everyone, again, uh, and welcome to the inaugural class of the Los Angeles Urban League's fourth quarter webinar series. We're pleased that all of you could join us here tonight for this evening's course. And hopefully you'll be able to join us for all of the other classes that we have as part of this quarter's seminar series. I'm Kenneth Allen, one of the co-directors of the Los Angeles Urban Leagues Entrepreneurship Center. And for the people who are not familiar with the EC, as we call it, uh, our role is to help businesses accelerate their growth through education by providing technical assistance and helping promote access to capital for businesses such as yourselves. If anyone on the call is not familiar with the EC and all of the things that we can do for firms like yours, uh, we urge you to visit uh, our web presence, which is laul.org, to learn more about the organization. The EC can offer you a wide range of services and tools to supplement the knowledge that you're going to learn from this series itself. Um, if you're not a client, please register. And once you are registered, you'll become part of the Los Angeles Urban League's ecosystem of companies, of corporate sponsors, and other organizations that help promote business success. More importantly, you'll be assigned business counselors that work with our entrepreneurship center, and those counselors will help you as you support and grow your business. And that support from those counselors and from the EC more broadly really falls in three areas. First is advice, which you'll get from the business counselors. They offer you the day-to-day -day connectivity that you need to help both your business grow and thrive but also our business counselors can refer you to other resources within the Urban League and outside of our own organization. Yeah. Uh, the EC also provides access to you for, ex for other types of expertise you might need, as well as access to banks, to lenders and investors that can help provide the capital you need to grow your firm. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, um, the Entrepreneurship Center can expose you to opportunities in the form of sponsorships, partnerships with larger companies that work with the Urban League, and other avenues to generate revenue for your firm. Uh, my colleague, Tai Umo, who uh, you might notice is on the call, uh, but who's dark, will in the link provide the URL for the Urban League, as well as provide his email address. So if you, if you have any questions about how to become an Urban League client or general questions about the Entrepreneurship Center in general, Tai can help field your questions and get you the answers that you need. With respect to our seminar series, um, some people in the audience might be familiar with the way we've structured these courses uh, and the genesis of the series overall. Uh, it was initially sponsored by the Small Business Administration, which has been a long-standing partner of the Urban League nationally, and um, initially launched this entire effort when the need became clear for financial support for small businesses at the start of the pandemic. That initiative by the Urban by the Small Business Administration expanded into what's called the Community Navigator Program. And that program is designed to give knowledge to small businesses such as yourselves, as well as provide clear paths to capital so that businesses can better navigate the challenges that might come from economic downturns, but also more importantly, help you take advantage of things when economies are going well. Um, for those of you who have participated in this series in the past, you might be familiar with the structure of what we're going to do with the seminar series for this quarter. Uh, as you might know, and as some of you may have seen from the schedule for this quarter, we'll have classes scheduled from 5 to 7 every Wednesday from today until December 21st, which will be our last class in this series. Uh, please note that we're going to skip the week of Thanksgiving, so there'll be no class on November 23rd and no homework due for that week. Uh, just kidding. Um, this quarter's course sequence is very similar to last quarter's, um, and we've, we've designed it specifically to provide you with a couple of specific things. Uh, one is overall better understanding of business strategy and specifically give you expertise in a couple of areas that we think are going to be very helpful to you growing your firm and, again, accessing capital. Um, some of those topics include product pricing. Uh, and we specifically want to emphasize that as a way to ensure that you're earning the right amount of revenue for the goods and services you produce, particularly in an inflationary environment like we're all dealing with today. Um, second big area is managing your cash flow and maintaining your books and records, which are both very critical uh, aspects of you running your business as you ultimately look to secure capital and financing. And then lastly, and most importantly, access to capital in all of its forms. Um, and the last three courses of this seminar series will focus on 
helping you understand the financing process, preparing you for that process, particularly with respect to all the financial documentation you'll need. Um, and you'll hear a lot about that from one of our other uh, hosts, Crystal Mitchell, in a few weeks' time. And then ultimately navigating the capital raising process once you decide to take that step. And our other counselor, Sharon Evans, will help lead those three courses at the end of the seminar series. Um, we are pleased to kick off this quarter seminar series, however, with a class called Digital Marketing, which is hosted by Chacha McGinnis, who's a longstanding uh, friend and partner of the Urban League. Uh, and it's very timely as well for the Urban League because we, over the next two to three months, will be offering a number of additional resources and courses related to digital marketing, cybersecurity, as well as the best way to utilize websites to access new channels to market your business, communicate with your customers, and potentially generate more revenue for your business. Please check the EC's website and communicate with your business counselors over the next few weeks to learn more about these upcoming offerings. With that, I'm pleased to introduce Crystal McGinnis, I'm sorry, Chacha McGinnis, um, who is our host for this evening. Chacha is a, an award-winning sales and marketing executive with over 20 years of experience helping businesses create and execute profitable growth strategies. She has a strong track record of performance in turnaround and high-paced organizations. Chacha utilizes keen analysis and insights with a team approach to help drive organizational improvements and implementation of best practices for her clients, uh, but particularly with respect to digital marketing. She's currently the CEO of a firm called California Beacons, which is a Long Beach-based digital marketing agency, where she focuses on bringing affordable marketing services and supportive educational resources to small businesses. With that, it's a pleasure to turn the call over to Chacha. Thanks, Chacha, and take it away. Hello, everybody. That's so exciting. Uh, I, I love it when this, uh, this time comes around. We do this uh, quarterly. We get to spend this time together and uh, work on your digital marketing strategy and uh, help you uh, walk away with some, some tips and nuggets uh, to help you start driving more return business, getting more customers to your door. And like uh, I always say, make the phone ring and the door swing. Uh, so with that uh, being said, I'm hoping you have some paper in front of you. Uh, so that you can take some notes because at the end of the workshop, uh, I will be asking you to share at least one thing that you feel like you can uh, take away and implement right away in your marketing strategy to help you start increasing that sale. So uh, with all of the tips that I'm going to be giving you today, uh, you will be able to increase your sales uh, by 50% or more uh, if you utilize a lot of these uh, tools, uh, and, and for some, it may take even just implementing one tool. Uh, but uh, I will give you enough nuggets here this evening to help you increase those sales, uh, double those sales that you're currently making, okay? So have some paper ready, please have a pen, uh, and let's get started. The other thing uh, is, I also want to make sure that I have you ready for the next series uh, workshop in the series, and that's uh, profit planning. So also at the end, uh, I'll need you to make sure that you have some notes on some things that uh, you want to have ready for, for the next workshop series, okay? All right, let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's get going. Ready? Yes, one moment. Okay. By the way, uh, if, if everyone could uh, jump into the chat and just share who you are and uh, what business, what is the name of your business and uh, your website, your email address. Uh, with marketing, every, every event, every time you're connecting with someone else, it's an opportunity to market your business and to network. Uh, so with everyone that's on this uh, workshop today, uh, I'm sure there's other people on the workshop that would love to know a little bit more about what you do, your business, and, and how they can possibly support you in business. You may have services that they need with their business. Uh, so if everyone could take a moment and just jump in the chat and share who you are, let's get to know each other. Uh, so we understand what industry you're in uh, and, and just a little bit about your business.
Doug, I'll give you a, a minute to do that. Make sure you jump in there and, and give your business and, and your, your, your website and or what business you're in. Also, another reason you want to do that is at the end of this workshop, there's going to be some, uh, some valuable uh, giveaways. Uh, so if we don't know who you are, we, we don't know who to uh, uh, redeem those uh, uh, valuable giveaways to. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So. Uh, what we're focused on today is, is getting more sales through your digital marketing strategy. Uh, you can do this within the next 30 days. So what I'm asking you to do is on your paper, right at the top of the paper that you're, you're writing on, get more sales in 30 days. So what you're going to learn today is how to double those sales in the next 30 days. I'm going to give you some tips to supercharge your marketing to help you start driving immediate results now. So as soon as you walk away from this workshop, you'll be able to implement these tools to start driving results immediately. Uh, give you some master methods uh, to help you drive more sales from your current customers. Uh, so if you are um, uh, a new business or if you've been in business for 5, 10, 15 years, uh, we have something here that everyone can walk away with and start implementing today, regardless of where you are in your business cycle. And we're going to talk about increasing customer loyalty so that people buy more often, because ultimately, that's what you want, is you want more people buying more often and then telling other people about you. Well, let's get into it. So, uh, Ken, what an, what an awesome introduction you gave me. I don't think I need to say anything, uh, you know, here about myself, but uh, I am the, the founder of California Beacons. Uh, I have been in this, uh, in this business, I like to say, for eons. Uh, so, as you know, the business is changing. Marketing is changing from what you may know from the past. Um, so, right now, that digital landscape is, is changing to the point that if you're just now figuring out uh, that you have to reach your, your customers where they are, and that's on their mobile devices, uh, understanding data of, of what it is that your customers want and how to get them back into your business, uh, it, you're a little bit behind. And so the landscape uh, has been changing for many, many years, you know, uh, so um, there's, there's a, I like to say there's a, there's a bridge uh, between virtual, this virtual space that we're in and marketing. And so this started over 10 years ago. Uh, your customers are now using their mobile phones. Uh, they're using uh, location-based apps. Uh, and so we've got to get you caught up if you're not using those tools to reach your customer. Next slide. So on the agenda, uh, we're going to talk about defining your ideal customer, uh, understanding the marketing tools that you have uh, access to, turn leads to contacts and then to sales, understanding the importance of profit planning and cash flow cycle. Next slide. So defining your ideal customer, have you thought about what your ideal customer looks like? Do you, do you kind of base that off of what you like uh, or what your customers are telling you they want? Uh, so who is your ideal customer? So I hope uh, just jot down on your paper who you think your ideal customer is. Next slide. I like to uh, put this uh, this quote in uh, because it's it's very very 
it's very important, you know, when we start thinking of who are our customers. Well, every company's greatest assets are its customers because without those customers, there is no company. If you don't have customers walking into your business and you don't have customers visiting your online store, you have no online store, you have no business. And so we have to make sure that we understand what the needs are, especially in this digital space of what our customers want, how they want to be interacted with, uh, when they want to be interacted with. Uh, and, and so another thing that we'll touch on here in the workshop. Next slide. So if I ask you, what does the customer journey look like? What path do you think your customers take to get to your business? And you know, for some of you that may not be uh, you know, uh, uh, as advanced with your, your marketing strategy, this probably looks like chaos to you. Uh, so this is actually uh, the process that customers take to get to your business and make that purchasing decision. And so it's the same as, as you know, uh, the, the, journey, the journey that we, you know, uh, we understand. And that is they still look for, you know, information about your business. Uh, they're in that awareness phase when they start. And then from that awareness phase, you know, they're seeing emails, they're uh, seeing advertisements on social media, then they move into that consideration phase. So I've seen, you know, four different ads from four different car dealerships. And now I'm kind of moving into that consideration phase of what do I really want? Uh, what's important to me? You know, is it price that's important to me? Uh, so from there, then they start looking at, okay, now that I've figured out what I kind of want, I know kind of what I want, well, let me start looking for some affirmation to make sure that I'm making the right decision. And that's when they start looking at reviews uh, and start trying to learn more about your business and how you interact with your customers and uh, the service you provide. Uh, and then once they've landed with you and they make that decision that, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and make that purchase with this business. Well, now that's where it's on you to make sure that you can get that customer back into your store when they come in the first time. That's, that's super important. When, when you gain a new customer or when a customer walks through your door, do you have a strategy to bring them back? That's the retention piece. And if you have a strategy to bring them back, chances are they'll become an advocate for you. Because if they're a constant repeat customer of your business, they're gonna tell other people. They're gonna tell you know, their friends that, hey, you've gotta visit this coffee shop. You know, they have amazing customer service. They have the best, the best bagels and uh, you know, sandwiches. Uh, so you, you want ultimately, when you make your strategy, you, you want to keep in mind how am I going to get people back to my business and how am I going to get them to be raving fans about my business? So if we condense down what looks like chaos, let's go to the next slide. Let's give you a simple view. Here's the simple view of that customer journey. So awareness, consideration, purchase, retention, and becoming an advocate for your business. Very simple. This is the condensed down version of what we just looked at. So uh, in that awareness phase, how are you driving customers to your business? How are you even getting them to come boots on the ground into your business or even visiting your online store? When they're in your store, when they're online with your website, are you offering, are you offering anything to, uh, to make that a, a more solid, sticky purchase for them? Are you offering them any kind of incentives or uh, you know, are you letting them know, are you adding that social proof to let them know that, hey, we've serviced 5,000 customers over the last five years. We've got five-star reviews on Google and Yelp. 
you, you want to help them make that decision because your competition is no longer down the street. They're no longer around the corner. Your competition is a quarter of a, a keystroke away. Think about it. When you're searching for something and you're on Google, you see all those ads that come up. You see ads, you see other businesses. And what draws your attention? What grabs you? Your customers are doing the same thing. If they're searching for uh, 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 sales on Black Friday, uh, you know, what are you offering to the customer to, to let them know that, hey, we've got sales over here as well. We've got sales. If you walk in the store, we've got sales on, on the website. Uh, so making sure that you give them something, some kind of incentive to uh, connect with your business and understand the value. What is your why buy? Why should they buy from you and not the business down the street? Next is that purchase. So when your customer is making that purchase, are you giving them an, uh, uh, you know, enough incentive to buy more? Usually when we make purchases online, uh, it's no different than if you're at the grocery store and you've done your shopping and you get to the end caps and there's all these little things at the end cap and you're like, oh shoot, Okay, well, I think I'm going to grab one of these. I need one of those. And you end up adding on at the end of, uh, you know, your shopping cycle there at the grocery store. Well, how do you, how do you bring that to your online business, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about that as well. Retention, of course, creating a reason for people to come back and see you again and uh, getting them to become advocates and, and talk about you and what you do. Next slide. So it's all about developing relationships online and offline. Uh, your customers, they must trust and respect you. It's about creating those micro experiences. I ask people all the time, what do you do? What does your business offer? And I hear people tell me, oh, well, well we sell clothing you know, uh, sports clothing, or, you know, we sell, you know, coffee, and we're a coffee house. I, I always hear people talk about the products that they sell. And we have to change that mindset. If you feel like you're in the business of selling products, well, you're gonna, you're gonna miss the boat a little bit. You, you have to start looking at you're in the business of selling a micro experience to another human being. Because think about it. If you are a coffee shop, I can buy my coffee anywhere. I can buy my coffee from Starbucks. I can buy it from Duncan. I can buy it from uh, the shop that's uh, near the gas station. I can pick up coffee while I'm in the gas station, right? It's about creating those micro experiences. How do you make people feel when they walk into your business? How do you make people feel when they visit your online store? Do they feel comfortable? Do they feel like they can trust you with their purchase? Do you make them feel warm? So a few examples of how you can create those micro experiences with your customers is uh, find uh, timely follow-ups, to their calls and emails, uh, being a resource, providing them with valuable information and being accountable when a problem occurs. Can you all think of some small gestures that you can you know, do right now in your business that will lead to establishing more warmth and trust uh, with, your, with your customers? How are you creating that experience now? What do you think you can do moving forward that can create that additional closeness and that additional relationship with your customer? Here's, here's an example uh, you know, of a tax accounting firm that I work with and we've worked together uh, to help define and create some micro experiences. So when you talk about being that valuable resource, right? When we talk about that, 
what's a way that uh, you can be that valuable resource? Well, we do our taxes, uh, what? We do them once a year. Uh, if you're a business owner, you know, you may be doing it, uh, you know, differently. Uh, but as a tax accounting firm, well, adding that valuable resources, reaching out to your customers throughout the year, to your business owners throughout the year, and offering them information when things change in, in, uh, that, that will affect their business, uh, sending out monthly newsletters with valuable information, uh, making sure that you share when you hear about something that's gonna help your, your customer maybe get some funding, uh, just adding that additional resource and being of value to your customers, it goes a long way. So think about in your business, what kind of valuable info can you start sharing with your customers so that they trust you more, they respect you more, and they want to do business with you more? Next slide. So how to define your customer. So you want to start by reviewing your current customers. Who are your customers? If you've, if you've been in business uh, for a little while, you probably have an idea. Uh, you may have a database of, of who your customers are, uh, but review who your customers are. Do you obtain demographics on your customers, uh, where they're coming from? You know, what zip codes, uh, male or female. Uh, so kind of review who's buying from you and what are they buying from you. Understand their behaviors. Do they typically buy on the weekends? Do they, do they typically make purchases on your uh, e-commerce store in the evenings between 5 and 10 p.m.? Understand your customers' behaviors because once you understand their behaviors, then you can start to understand what their goals are and what their needs are, right? So if they're, if they're purchasing uh, you know, on uh, your e-commerce store in the evenings and you start to identify that, okay, majority of the people are ordering uh, this particular uh, hair bundles uh, in the evening once a month, well, now you can start tailoring marketing strategies to those specific items, to uh, that specific audience of, of people and specific locations as well. It'll help you start to define some targeted marketing so that you can reach the people who are more likely to engage with your website, engage with your products and engage with your business. Identify and understand your customers' fears and concerns. Uh oh, can we uh, can we go back two slides? Yes, Sorry. one moment. Okay. So under, understanding their fears and their concerns helps you to make sure that uh, you understand what they need. So if you are uh, asking your customers, hey. Uh, one more slide. Can we go back one more? If, if you're asking your customers, um, what are some of the challenges uh, they're having? You know, if you're doing business to business, uh, you can ask your customers, what are some of the challenges they're having with their business? Uh, maybe what are some of the things that they need that you're currently not offering? If you're doing business to consumer, well, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to understand uh, where your customers, uh, where, you know, where else are your customers purchasing? So when I come into your coffee shop, uh, ask me, hey, you know, is there anything, is there anything else that we could be doing here uh, in the business to provide you a great experience? Are there any products that you'd like to see? Uh, you know, is there anything we can be doing different? Opening that door, and sometimes people don't like to know. You know, I've had customers who say, well, if I don't know, then I don't know. But it, not a great strategy. If, if you know what your customers' concerns are, if you know that they didn't have the best experience uh, when they were in your store, uh, or if there's items that they came in for that wasn't in stock that you didn't have, and they just walked out and didn't say anything to anybody, well, Understanding what their concerns are helps you to redefine your 
your marketing strategy and, and how you're targeting your audience and making sure that you're delivering that micro experience that's going to keep them coming back to your business over and over again. Identify uh, the way they make decisions. Uh, you know, identifying your own buying behaviors, right? A lot of times we tend to make our marketing strategies based off of what we like. And if we do that, we're, we're definitely uh, putting ourselves in a position to have uh, inventory sitting on a shelf that may be aging. And then you're, and then you're gonna have uh, a conversation uh, with Crystal in workshop number three about cash flow cycle. Uh, so yes, understanding how they make those decisions and understanding your own buying behaviors, because if you know that this is the way I make purchases, well, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's how your customers make purchases. And you don't want to take your buying behaviors and make it your customer. So if you understand your own, you'll understand when you're putting your buying behaviors on your customer. You're expecting your customers to buy the way you do, right? Uh, differentiate between their wants and needs. That's, that's an easy one. As you start to talk to your customers and understand uh, how they like your products, uh, you know, what draws them to your products, uh, to your business, what they like about the service you offer, you'll be able to differentiate between, hey, here's some, here's some things that my customers want to see. Here's the things that they need to see, right? Redefine. Let's redefine. Once you go through this, redefine what your ideal customer looks like, how they want to buy, why they buy. What need can you fulfill? Because chances are what you start with, uh, what you started with at the beginning of this workshop as who your ideal customer is, there's a chance that by the end of this workshop, it might change a little bit uh, as to who your ideal customer is, what they look like, why they buy, when they buy, and, and how you can fulfill those needs. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So. How many of you have a marketing plan? Did you just start your business and didn't put any thought into how you're going to market the business? You just, you know, just said, I've got a great product. I've got a great solution. I'm going to open a store and open an online business and I'm going to sell it. Uh, well, you have to uh, consider your marketing strategy. What's the plan? Because, uh, it's a beautiful thing to have the, the shiniest widget and you know the most amazing services in the world, but if nobody knows that you exist, you're never gonna sell anything. You can have the best product sitting on the shelf, but if I don't know you have it, if everybody else in this workshop don't know you have it, how are you gonna move them from the shelf? So in your marketing plan, a few things that you want to include, you want to define a target market. Uh, what does that target market look like for you? And again, that's where the demographics come in of understanding, you know, your customers or starting to, to understand who your customers are. Uh, you know, do you uh, market primarily to women? Uh, you know, if you're a beauty supply, you know, chances are you're, you're, target market is going to be women. Uh, you know, are you offering, uh, you know, nutritional supplements, you know, whatever it is that your business is offering, start to define that target market. Who am I going to offer my products to? Find out what products or services your target market needs and what are they willing to buy, right? So again, let's go back to the beauty supply. Uh, if you have uh, an online e-commerce uh, beauty supply store, are you going to offer every type of hair bundle there is out there? Or are you going to narrow down to what your audience wants? You know, are you narrowing down to straight hair? Are you narrowing down to wavy hair? Uh, and you can always expand your offering 
and, and utilize that as a way to engage your customers even more. Uh, but start looking at your products and, and figure out what are people buying? What does the market need? Uh, and what are people willing to pay for? Which also will, you know, as a part of the workshop that you'll be working on in the next series, and that's, and that's uh, profit planning. So the price of your product and service is very important. Uh, this is the quickest way to erode your profits uh, within your business. If you do not plan your marketing strategy or have some kind of idea of how much you're going to spend, what kind of expenses you're going to have trying to get your business out there in front of everyone, it is so easy to erode all of your profits uh, quickly. Uh, and so an, an example of that is uh, I, I have uh, a client who reached out and they were talking about how they tried Facebook ads and they just put all this money into Facebook ads and uh, didn't get any results from it, but they put all this money into Facebook ads. So, you know, uh, when looking at what advertisements uh, are you going to utilize to drive people to your product and your service? Is the price point of your product or your service uh, taking into account that you've got to pay for marketing? You, you've got to drive a marketing strategy. And so that should be included in, in the price of your product or your service. And then how do you make that available to the public? You know, which uh, portals are you going to uh, utilize in your strategy? Or are you going to be using all the social media portals? Uh, you know, are you in a market that still, you know, uses a uh, print? Uh, you know, I, I have some markets that, uh, that the demographic is, you know, primarily a senior community, and they still utilize print. So, uh, you know, it's understanding how are you going to make that available to the, to the public, but also the, the, the target market that you're focused on, that you're trying to drive uh, sales within. Next slide. So understanding your marketing tools. All right. So the tools that I'm going to share with you today, there'll be a lot of tools. Uh, uh, all of these tools I have used uh, myself in my business with, with clients. And so I'm sharing with you some tools that uh, have helped myself uh, and the businesses, some of the businesses that I work with uh, to improve conversions and to drive more sales. Next slide. So marketing basics. Uh, you probably know all of these, uh, but I'm just going to recap and make sure that you have this on your list of, of action items to plug into your marketing strategy and marketing plan. But that is having a mobile-friendly, responsive website with SEO. So making sure that you uh, plug in uh, keywords within the website that's going to help you to be found in the Google search. And the reason you want a mobile-friendly, responsive website uh, is because uh, you want consumers to have, we talk about that micro experience, and you want them to have a good experience when they come to you. We live in a generation now in a time where <laughs> I call it the now generation. Everybody wants everything now. They don't want to wait for it. And if it takes too long to serve it up to me, I'm going to go someplace else. So if you know you're in the now generation, you want to make sure that your website is mobile friendly, responsive. Uh, and that you have keywords within the website that's going to uh, help you be found in organic searches. Mobile friendly uh, means that the website uh, conforms to the size device that the customer is viewing your website on. Uh, URL specific email and signature. Uh, you know, uh, this is one that, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I feel that it adds to the credibility of your business. Uh, there's so much spam that comes across everybody's inbox. Uh, and think about how you look at emails when they come across and it's, um, you know, mybusiness at gmail.com. 
Well, the first thing you probably think is, oh, this is a scammer. Uh, this is spam you know, or it's going to hit your inbox and you're not going to take it seriously uh, because you don't see that business specific URL, that email attached. You you don't know right away that it's coming from a legitimate business. And so uh, this has a lot of value uh, when interacting with your customers and helping to build that trust and credibility in your business. Uh, I always recommend add an email signature. It's just one more way for you to keep in front of your customers with different incentives that you have uh, and getting them to engage with you in different ways. So you can have your uh, social media links within that email signature, or you can even say, hey, visit our website you know, for the Black Friday uh, sale that's starting tomorrow. Digital business cards. Um, I don't know. The last time I purchased business cards for the business, uh, they're you know they're kind of obsolete in in, in our world. Uh, and so, when you're engaging with customers, do you really think they keep your business card? They probably did ten years ago, but people don't keep business cards. Uh, I had someone hand me a business card and I, ki I kind of look for a second like, oh my goodness, I haven't seen one of these in a while. What do I do with it? Uh, and so I ended up bringing it uh, back to the office and you know just sat it on the desk and I don't think I picked it up again. Uh, and so uh, with us being in this digital space in this digital age, people want to be interacted with digitally. So they're on their phones. Think, think about when you're out and about and how many folks you see walking down the street, uh, just holding their phone as, as they're walking down the street. It's kind of hard sometimes to get their attention away from the phone. Uh, but if you know everybody is in their device, well, let's meet them where they are. Let's jump in their device with them and help them to know that we exist and who we are and what we can offer to you. Uh, and some of those reasons why uh, they should be doing business with us, right? Uh, making sure you have a price list. It's so easy to mess mess up your you know your cash flow cycle if you don't have a price list. Uh, you should know your retail price, what your floor is. You know what is that break even point? When when does the loss come in? So that when you're talking with a customer, one you 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 have some you know consistency across your business with regards to pricing and what you're putting out there with customers. You know, are you charging, you know, this customer that walks into your restaurant $10 for pizza? And then the next person that walks in, you're negotiating and you say, okay, uh, if you buy a pizza, I'll give it to you for eight. Uh, well, you know, it depends on your business, but you want to have that price list so that people know straight away, okay, here's what you know, the pizza cost, here's what the additional add-ons cost. And now if you decide to, to you know, uh, discount someone, you know exactly what your floor is. You're not going to say, um, hey, I'll give you every topping at no cost, you know, as, an, as a freebie here, as an add-on, because you know what, you know what that floor is. Uh, you know, of that particular product or that service. And so making sure that you know uh, and understanding your price list, but that's all going to come to uh, with your, your, you know, price planning when you get into the next workshop, but you should have uh, that information available when you go into that workshop. So you can really start digging into uh, that profitability and what that looks like. CRM. Uh, customer relation management tool. How are you keeping up with your customers? Are you are you still using uh, an Excel spreadsheet? Are you using a, a piece of paper or a workbook? How do you keep up with your customers? This is pretty critical uh, because if you don't know who your customers are, there is no way for you to market to get them back to you. We're going to talk further about that and why that's so important and some of the tools that you can utilize to help you get customers back. 
Uh, and then just setting up your online profiles, securing your URL, your trademark. Uh, you know, if you're a business that, you, you know, your brand is, uh, you want to make sure that you protect your brand. Uh, you want to make sure that you trademark that, bef you know, before you put your logo or your business name uh, all over social media. Just make sure that you secure that trademark uh, and that you submit for the trademark and get that process started. Um, next slide. So uh, mobile friendly responsive website. So we talked about that. This is just a, a view of what a mobile friendly responsive website looks like. So you see how from the desktop to the iPad to the iPhone, how the site conforms to the user experience. So you also want a website that's fast, because remember, if you don't serve it up to me fast enough, I'm going to go to another uh, uh, detailer and, and see what else they have to offer. So within that first page of your website, are you giving them enough information fast enough to make them want to stay with you, call you, email you, and act? And that's what you want. Take a look at your current website. And if a customer was only to stop at one page, the very first page of your website, how are you engaging them? Are you giving them enough there to convert them into an actionable step, which is picking up the phone, emailing, purchasing, or uh, you know, going further into the website? Next slide. So on your website, so now that we've talked about what the mobile friendly responsive website looks like, uh, how are you getting them to engage with your website? So think about this. If, uh, if you have a brick and mortar store, chances are you have a process when customers come into the business, right? Uh, so if I walk into your store. There's someone that's going to greet me likely and say, hey, welcome to our business. Uh, you know, is there anything I can help you with? Right. And then as I'm checking out, uh, you've got someone at the counter who's saying, hey, would you like to donate to our foundation a dollar? You know, would you like to add on this item to your purchase? Uh, you, you have that salesperson that's creating that micro experience with me when I, I walk into your store, right? Well, how are you doing that on your website? Are you doing it on your website? Do you have a virtual salesperson on your, on your website? If, if you don't, you're missing a huge opportunity. And, and I can't explain how huge this is, but you're missing a big opportunity to engage further with your customers, get them to buy more, learn more about more of the solutions and products and services that you offer and get them to come back because you're creating that micro experience virtually with them, right? So, so you're, you're doing a fantastic job at creating that micro experience when I walk into the store, you're upselling me as I walk throughout the store, you're offering amazing service as I walk through the store. What about when I stop on your website? Who's there greeting me at your website? And I'm not saying that you have to have a pop up or pop out with, uh, you know, a virtual person, you know, standing there. Some, some people choose to do that. Uh, just depends on your business and, and, and how you want to present your business. Uh, what I mean by creating that virtual salesperson is making sure that uh, your, your experience is connected to the service that you offer and the products and solutions you offer. So if I come into your website, am I getting a, a pop-up that says, hey, welcome to our website or thank you for visiting our website? Is there something uh, letting me know right away, thank you for coming here. 
you you had so many places that you could have visited and you chose me and we're we're thankful for that uh so uh, you probably have seen you visit websites uh, uh one that uh, a box retailer that does this all the time uh you know is your nordstrom's your macy's when you log on to the website you get the pop-up if you're a first time visitor right to the site uh, jump in with your email and get 10% off your first purchase. Well, that's pretty assumptive, right? That's assuming that I came to your website to purchase something, but you gave me an incentive. And so, okay, fantastic. Because I likely will purchase something. I came to you. So I'm looking for something, chances are, but you just incentivize me a little more right out the gate. Does that make sense? So think about your business and one, how you can incentivize people right out the gate when they visit. And then while they're in your website, right? Uh, how do you get them to buy more while they're in your website? That's another good question. When they're getting through that checkout process, are you offering them additional solutions? Are you offering them additional products to enhance their purchase? When you go to a fast food restaurant and you go through a drive-through, you place your order, right? And the next thing is they don't, they don't just say, okay, pull up to the next window, your total is. No, they don't. They ask you, do you want to add on a pie? Well, no, not today. How about a Sunday? Uh, no, not, not today. But how many people do you think add on those additional items? You don't know unless you ask. And you have to ask digitally as well. You may be asking in your brick and mortar, but you cannot forget your digital store. How do you ask that same question in your digital store? Well, we'll, we'll get into that, but you can create a sales funnel. If people are in that purchasing process and they make a purchase, uh, you can always uh, tie more offerings into that purchase by just asking the question. Next slide. So here's what a, a sales funnel looks like. Uh, you generally have uh, a squeeze page, which is uh, what draws people in, right? That's that beginning draw in, getting me into the site, getting me hooked. Okay, I've got 10%, yay. Okay, now that I'm in the page, right, I can make that purchase. So I'm looking for a pair of shoes for New Year's Eve. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I found the shoes I want. I'm gonna check out, make that purchase. And then I get to making that purchase, right? The order confirmation. And you can ask me, hey, did you forget to, to purchase a handbag? What, what, are, what are you going to uh, do with the shoes? You know, are you, is this for an evening out? You know, do you need a scarf to go along with those shoes? Uh, so there's so many ways that you can enhance uh, that experience and that purchase for your customer. Because what I have found is, uh, is when people are shopping, you know, we, we tend to be focused on that one thing that we came for. However, However, when you remind customers about other things that they may have forgotten, they'll tend to purchase more. So you can upsell that, that customer, right? By just letting them know about additional things that you have. Uh, here's, here's an example that I shared in one of the previous classes. Um, there's a, a business owner who has a, a bakery, a, a pie shop. And she uh, offers uh, pies, amazing pies, amazing. And so she asked, well, how would I create a sales funnel and I sell pies? Great question. So if I'm in love with your pies, right? Chances are, I know other people that would be in love with your pies. Pies is just one of those things that We'll, we'll, we'll take it to a dinner party. I'll show up at Thanksgiving with the pie. I'll send one to a friend. And so 
as people are going through that purchase of, let's say I buy a pie, I'm in love with a pie and I buy one. And then I get to that purchase cycle and I see a pop-up that says, uh, Thanksgiving is coming. What are you going to show up, show up with at Thanksgiving? Would you like to purchase a second pie for a discounted price? Heck yeah. I want everybody to experience this. Uh, and so think about uh, in your business, how can you create that sales funnel uh, to get people engaging and converting uh, more of the solutions and more of the products and services that you offer, but also seeing value. They're not gonna purchase if they don't see the value in adding that addition uh, or, or those additional solutions or products, right? What is that reason? Where's that, why buy? Why should I buy additional? What's it going to do for me? Where's the benefit, right? So not just offering additional, but what will it do for that experience for me as the, as the user, as the consumer? Next slide. So here's, I told you to have some paper ready. Here is a way for you to create uh, quick pop-ups for your website to engage consumers and get them to give you uh, their information right away as they visit your site. So Black Friday is coming up. You've got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving. Uh, everybody's gonna be out. People are in the mindset of buying and saving, right? So if you know people are ready, they're gearing up, they're ready. They're, they're not standing in the long lines as much as they used to. They're sitting at the computer waiting for midnight to hit so that I can see what all the sales are and try to jump in. Okay, right, here's your opportunity to make sure that people know what you have to offer when they come to your website. Write this down, it's called Get G-E-T, site, S-I-T-E, control, C-O-N-T-R-O-L.com. And, and Samira, can you drop this in the chat uh, for everyone as well? So get site control, very inexpensive. Uh, I use it with my business and a way for you to capture information uh, with your customers. So you can say, uh, you know, 20% uh, off sale today only. Uh, enter your name, enter your email to, to receive the discount uh, as they go through their shopping purchase. Uh, anything you want to, to put there, you can engage with them with a newsletter, uh, get VIP deals, be first to get VIP deals, give us your contact information. Here's why uh, building your own database of customers is important uh, because as you start determining how you're going to market to your customers. Even if I'm your current customer and I walk into your business uh, or, or come onto your website and I have not given you my name and my email address, you can't send me spam. You can't remarket to me. So you want to start building that database of your customers. And here we go. We talk about getting customers back into your business and doubling those sales to your business. Well, guess what? Now you know who I am, right? I gave you my name. I gave you my email address for the incentive, the 10% off my first purchase. Well, now I just gave you permission to remarket to me. So now next month, you can send me, or even at the end of the month, if, if I purchased, you know, from your bakery, you can send me now an email saying, hey, Chacha, Thanksgiving is coming. Did you forget? Stop by and see us and get 15% off or 10% off your Thanksgiving purchase. Don't show up empty handed. Who does that? Right? Uh, so uh, you can utilize this and change these out and do A-B testing. You're able to see which ads people are engaging with. Do they like this promo more than that promo? Very easy to use, okay? Great way to get your customers back and, and, and double that business from your current folks that visit the site. Next slide. 
So another way you can utilize this is for bounce, right? Uh, website lead capture. It's, I, again, put this at the top of your list. The data, data, data is important. You want your customers to give you the okay to engage with you. But let's say I'm on your website and I decide, okay, I don't want to purchase anything today. And for whatever reason, I decide I'm ready to click out of your website. Well, here's, here's where uh, you can have that virtual salesperson jump in with the, but wait, 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 <laughs> before you go, what if, what if I gave you an additional $15 off of your purchase of $100, right? Uh, so, so virtually, you're able to do the same thing as if I was standing in your store, right? If I came to your, your car dealership and I test drove cars, I, I looked around, I test drove cars, and then I just start walking out the door and don't say anything to you, right? You're going you're gonna to meet me at the door and say, hey, hey, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. What happened? You know, uh, you know was, it, was it anything with the experience? Is there anything I can do uh, you know, to help you make this purchase today? Well, it's the same thing. You want to engage with those people before they leave because what if I leave you and go to the next e-commerce store and guess what? They gave me 10% just for coming on coming into their store for the first time and you didn't. So think about that entrance and exit uh, strategy within your virtual planning for your website before you go and thanks for coming, right? So when I come in, thanks for coming. Before you go, hey, here's another incentive. That's if they didn't purchase, if they're trying to leave you without saying goodbye. So great way to stop people from abandoning your website. Uh, and you can announce special deals that you have, upsell, cross-sell, uh, entice people to subscribe. People don't like giving you their contact info unless you're giving them something. I mean, you're the same way. Why, you know, people value their email address and phone number like they do their social security numbers. I don't want spam. I already have 10,000, you know, spam messages in my inbox on a regular basis. I don't want spam. So I'm very cautious with who I give my contact info to. Incentivize me. Give me a reason to want to give you my info. And it helps you to know your audience better as well because you'll start to understand from the analytics of why they're engaging with you. Next slide. Email campaigns. So another great opportunity to engage with your customers and get them back into the store. I told you I would give you some nuggets to help you uh, drive 50% more sales. If a customer comes into your website and, and you're getting them back again to purchase, Within that 30 days, you just increase that sale potentially by 50%, depending on what they purchase, right? So here we go. You have my contact information now, right? I gave you permission to email me and to reach out to me with incentives that you have. Take advantage of that. I'm asking you for information. I gave you my contact. I'm expecting you to send me incentives when you have them. I don't wanna to have to go looking for it. I got a million things that I do in a day. And it's always nice when, when people are sent incentives of the things that they purchase because you're just reminding the customer that, hey, don't you need this? You purchased this in the past, don't you need this again? So a lot of times, you can be the reminder that people need to make a purchase that they want to make, but it could just be timing. It could just be that, you know, I had intended to get to it and, you know, just forgot about it. So stay in front of your customers with email campaigns. Uh, another thing that you can add into those campaigns is, right, is, is that trust factor. Uh, add valuable information into those campaigns. Uh, you know, are you able to send out some tips to the customer? So here we are. If you're a restaurant and you've got your customer's information and you're sending them an email, you know, with coupons to get them back, 
Uh, how about for you know the holiday? Hey, here's a here's a tip to make your Thanksgiving turkey not burn, uh, you know, in the oven or uh, whatever it is. So if you're if if you're if you cook the way I do, that's a valuable nugget for me. I think I could have been on that show, America's Worst Cooks, but so. So adding valuable information for your customers uh, in those emails is a way to keep them engaged. Uh, and I recommend it monthly. You don't want to overwhelm them and then they want you to take, take them off the list because once they request for you to take them off the list, well, you're back to square one and trying to get their contact information again and get the okay to market to them digitally. Next slide. So a few different types of uh, marketing emails. Uh, there's the welcome email. So if I make a purchase from you, what a, what a great way to send a, you know, thank you email, introduction email, uh, nurturing emails. You can provide the user with additional information that they may be needing. Retention emails, uh, you know, retain them by engaging them again. Are you offering incentives or enough to make them want to come back to you again? And then promotional emails, uh, special events, virtual discussions, sales. Uh, we're coming into the holiday season. You know, you've got uh, about six, uh, six weeks here to, to really drive some of these resources and tools to help you convert more sales over the next uh, month and a half here. So... Uh, start looking at what can you implement immediately. And a lot of these things that we're talking about today, you can implement tonight once we disconnect from this workshop. So I wanted to make sure you had actionable things that you can use today uh, that's easy for you to maintain as well and do yourself. Next slide. Uh, email signatures, just, re, you know, we talked about this, just uh, another way to, uh, you know, enhance the credibility with your customer and uh, create that trust. Uh, you can uh, create a signature, add your social links, you know, anything that you want the customer to know about. If you want them to know about an event that you have coming, you know, a holiday event, holiday sales, uh, you can incorporate all of those things into your email signature. So as you're reaching out to your customers, give them another reason to reach back to you. Keep them updated, you know, give them call to actions. Next slide. Uh, text campaigns. Uh, I, I wish I was uh, able to see all of you and, and I can ask, you know, for a show of hands of how many people are actually texting their customers now with text campaigns. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, I, I, I've said this throughout this workshop this evening, your customers are on their mobile devices, right? Um, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know anyone who does not have a mobile device. Um, so if you know that over 90% of people are utilizing mobile devices, why wouldn't you try to meet them there? Why wouldn't you send text campaigns to your customers? Why wouldn't you send them, uh, you know, invitations to, to come back to your business? So here's how a text campaign could be uh, relevant for you. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, here's, a, here's a great example. Uh, I have a, uh, a multi-poo and uh, he, he has a, a babysitter and she texts, she does text campaigns. And so uh, he usually goes to the babysitter on the, uh, the doggy sitter on the weekend. So I can actually enjoy some part of my weekend uh, and we not have the doggy baby in tow. Uh, and so there was a weekend that I missed. Uh, and so she sent me a text, a text uh, in which I could, you know, I'm able to tell that it was a text campaign. So, so she sends the same text to everyone, but it got me to engage. Uh, so I missed a weekend and she sent me a text message to get me back and, and to get us uh, back on track because 
my schedule just went crazy. And I just kind of said, okay, well, I'll get back to it when I get back to it. But she sent me a text and said, hey, uh, where is Teddy? Uh, we miss Teddy. Uh, and so sent me an incentive that I could not pass up. And I said, holy smokes, uh, let's pack your bag and get you to the doggy sitter tonight. You know, let's, let's go now. So the incentive was that good that it caused me to stop what I was doing and, and reply and say, okay, hey, let's go ahead and book it. So uh, in thinking about how are you reaching your customers, everybody's busy. You know, you've got uh, customers now that could be working uh, multiple jobs. You've got customers that, uh, you know, are just uh, engaged in everyday life. And it's difficult now for them to uh, stop by sometimes a physical place of business. And so if I've visited your business before, right, I've given you my contact info, I gave you my, my name and my email address, and you do nothing with it, shame on you. Uh, so you could very well be messaging me and saying, hey, Chacha, uh, you, you stopped by for pizza and we miss you, would love to have you back. Uh, how about $10 off a family pack or, or or three pizzas, whatever it is, whatever incentive you want to utilize to get me back. Because guess what? If you know who I am, then you know my purchase history. If you're using a, a customer relation tool, you know my purchase history. And I can, I can see some of you kind of thinking right now, like, okay, well, I'm in an industry that is transactional. And so my customers, uh, if I'm a restaurant, my customers are in and out. Uh, so I don't necessarily know what they're purchasing, but wait, yes, you can know what they're purchasing. So if you, if you have a, a loyalty program in place, and, and we'll get to that, uh, you know who your customers are, you know what I purchased, you know that I came to your coffee shop three weeks ago and I have not been back since. How valuable would it be to say cha-cha we know you love our coffee. We haven't seen you in a while. Can we invite you back with the coffee on us? Or can we invite you back for uh, a free bagel with the purchase of a coffee? Did you just upsell? What are the chances of that customer now also showing up? What if, if I'm a regular coffee purchaser or buyer, why did I even stop coming to your business to begin? Was it, was it because, you know, my, my employer changed and my route changed? I'm going a whole different route now. Is it because I had a bad experience when I came to your business the last time? Is it because I think your coffee is too expensive? Why did I stop, uh, you know, buying from you? It'll, it'll help you to understand what your customers want. Because guess what? If I engage with you with that incentive you send to me via text, you now have an opportunity to understand a little bit more about my purchasing behaviors and what I like. Because now if I buy that, bag uh, that uh, bagel and I get a free coffee, with the purchase of a bagel, guess what? Now you know I like bagels too. Next slide. So, and, and looking at uh, CRM solutions, there are so many of them out there. Um, I've used a lot of them in the past. I've used HubSpot, I've used uh, Zoho, I've used, um, uh, which other one? I've used a, a number of them. And I currently use Thrive. Uh, so this is the one that I'm using. And the reason I use Thrive in my business is because I'm able to send right from within the, the customer relation tool, I'm able to send text messages, text campaigns, as well as email campaigns right to my customer base. Uh, so you're able to see engagement, you're able to see uh, how people are engaging with those texts, uh, it's a it's a pretty uh, robust uh, CRM tool. It's it's not like the CRMs ten years ago. Uh, CRMs today are on steroids, and so um, 
making sure that you take advantage of uh, being able to remarket to your customers. If they're your customers and they give you permission to market to them until they say, don't market to me anymore, you should be engaging with them, sending them incentives via text, sending them incentives on uh, email newsletters. Uh, so whatever CRM you're using, start looking at how do I get these people back into my business? Uh, because I assure you, if you actually make this part of your marketing plan, how do I retain my customers? How do I get them to buy more? How do I get them back into my, into back, back into my business? And how do I get them to tell somebody else about me? Uh, you should be walking into your marketing plan, having those things in your mind. Of, this is where I need my marketing plan to end. This is, this is how I want the customer journey with my business to end, right? Uh, next slide. Uh, so I just gave you a view of, uh, for me, what that dashboard solution looks like. Uh, but again, whatever solution works for your business, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pretty detail-oriented person. And so I like to see what my customers are spending, what they're purchasing, uh, how often they purchase it from me and what other opportunities uh, I have within that business. And so making sure you find a solution that helps you to, to define that and, um, you know, give you a kind of a landscape of your customer base so that you can start driving more activity and conversions uh, through other channels. Next slide. So the digital business card, uh, uh, you, you all may have seen, you know, my wrist as we're going through this. Uh, so I don't know when the last time was that I used a business card. I want to say maybe it was five years ago or so. Um, so I, I recommend get yourself uh, a digital business card. And here's why. It creates a talking point for your business, right? So if you're talking with the customer and the customer says, okay, well, give me your business card. And you hand them a, the, the piece of paper and they say, okay, I'll call you if I'm interested. What are the chances they're gonna call you? Have you called people back that gave you their business card? Seriously, honestly, tell, tell me the truth here. Did you call, how many of those people did you call back that gave you their paper business card? You, you probably can count them on one hand. So you want to get yourself a digital QR code or you know, some kind of a wearable digital you know, um, business card. It creates a talking point in that now when that customer says, Give me your business card. Well, here's what, what I do is I ask them to, uh, do you have your smartphone with you? Which I know the answer is gonna, going to be yes. Uh, okay, can you do me a favor? Can you tap your device uh, here on my business card? And it'll give you all of my contact information right on your phone. So the picture you're seeing here is uh, is what the customer would, would pop up on the customer's phone. And so it creates that talking point because now I'm able to stand there and say, oh, okay, great. You've got my contact information, but I know that I just gave you a whole lot of reasons to reach back out to me. One, I'm in your phone. I made it to your phone. <laughs> that's that's, a, that's a, a chance that a customer will you know, come back and engage and respond uh, or purchase. Uh, what a sure way to make sure that you make an impression with that customer and you stand apart from everybody else that's doing the same thing you're doing. If I handed you a piece of paper, what are the chances you're going to call me versus if this popped up on your phone and you've got a video about my business and what makes us so special You've got all of our contact information. You've got a picture of the team and you've got an incentive as to why you should consider doing business with us. Are you gonna share that with people? They're probably gonna walk away, 
call a couple people you know and be like, oh my gosh, I just got the most amazing business card sent to me. Let me send it to you. You got to check this out. I got to get one of these. Uh, and so it creates that talking piece, but now you're in their phone. You just embedded yourself in their phone, in their world. And uh, these uh, digital wearable business cards, I mean, you can, you can always uh, create a, a digital QR code in, in which there's sites uh, uh, that you can do it for free. Uh, and I'll send you that uh, also. And, and what is the name of that? I'll send it to you. Uh, but you can create free QR codes. Uh, or you can choose to get yourself a, a wearable business card. They even come with the um, uh, credit card size, uh, 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 credit card size uh, devices as well. That if someone, uh, instead of giving them a piece of paper, have them tap the, uh, the, the card and it populates the same way. There's so many of these uh, digital wearable devices out there. Uh, whatever you choose to do, Create that talking point. You want to be, uh, you know, that person that engages customers with something new and a reason to talk about your business. Show up with something like this. Next time someone asks you for your business card, you give them that look like, what business card? A, a, a paper business card? Oh, let me let me turn you on to something new. Uh, so so there's a lot of them out there. Next slide. There's link. There's uh, popple, there's so many. It just depends on, you know, what works for you, uh, what you like to use, um, and um, you can find them. I I found mine on Amazon, so they're all over. Next slide. So social promo videos. Let's get into social media. Uh, so in your social media strategy, you want to keep in mind a few things and. You know, I know sometimes this tends to overwhelm people because, uh, you know, people sometimes say, my goodness, I, I can't even keep up with my own Facebook and then to have to keep up with the business Facebook. Uh, so a few things to keep in mind uh, is there's four types of video content on social media. Uh, you've got stories and now reels, okay? Uh, short form videos, long form videos, and then you have live streams. Uh, so, you know, are you offering solutions that, you know, engage people and teach people how to do what you're doing? Or, you know, are you a, uh, a makeup consultant, you know, and you want to drive more customers? Well, what a great way to drive more customers by, you know, doing live streams and getting people in and learning how to do some things on their own. It creates that trust, right? It creates a following. And chances are now when they start looking for makeup, you know, if you're a makeup uh, uh, brand ambassador uh, or if you offer makeup uh, in your e-commerce store, what are the chances I'm going to purchase from you? You just, you just help me, uh, you know, get everything together here for New Year's Eve or for my birthday. Uh, you're, you're, you help me to build that trust in, in your offering and in, you know, the workshop that you provided to me. And I'm going to tell other people. I'm going to share that information with others. I'm going to help be your brand ambassador because I love what you offer. Next slide. So just a couple of tips for your social media. And, and I'll tell you, the list is, is there's a, a longer list uh, I, I could put together here for you, but I, I don't want to overwhelm you with social media tips. Uh, but just some things to be aware of is you want to post with purpose and value. You know, if, if you're just posting just to post, you post a picture of, uh, you know, your your a retailer and, and you post a picture of, you know, the water bottle. Okay. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, post with value, you know, are you showing me some fashions that go together for the winter? You know, are you giving me some fashion? No, no's, you know, uh, post with value. 
provide unique content, engage people, you know, when you're posting on your stories or your reels, what do you think? Do you like this jacket or do you like that jacket? Which would you wear? Show some personality. People like to see the person behind the machine. They, they like to see that, uh, you know, I'm not just, I'm not just a retailer. We, we have live people working here at, at our e-commerce business. You know, there's human beings behind the machine. You know, people want to feel like they connect with you. So what can you share? What can you post to create that connection? Uh, you know, you can share pictures of an in-store event you had. You know, uh, you can share pictures of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the food truck uh, in front of the, the business uh, that you guys had, uh, sharing how, how people engaged and, you know, engaged with your business while they were enjoying with the food truck that day. Uh, so just real life things that human beings do uh, that I can connect with or that a, a user, potential user can connect with or customer and be consistent. You want to uh, create yourself a schedule and be consistent because once you've got me hooked, I'm going to keep coming back for more. Uh, so if, if I'm following you, if you know, I uh, value the information that you're giving, be consistent, give me more. Uh, and you can do that through your newsletters, through social media, uh, and even through closed Facebook groups. So if you have, um, let's say you have uh, your motivational speaker and you offer um, uh, in, uh, motivational tips, you know, for life coaching, you know, uh, life coaching skills, you, you may decide you want to have an open and closed uh, Facebook group. So that closed Facebook group, you may have your customers come into that group so that you can do live uh, streams and share uh, workshops and, and, sh and people not be uh, afraid to share on that, that forum because they know it's closed. Uh, so it just depends on the business you're in, the type of customers uh, you're, you're working with. Uh, just another idea of some ways that you can offer more valuable content to your, your customer base. Next slide. Rise above the noise on social media, graphics that grab attention. Uh, so uh, do you just post a, a picture or, or are you actually posting things that will cause someone to turn around and say, oh, wait, wait, okay, oh yeah, that's cool. Uh, so people like things that move which is why we like videos so much because they're action, they move. Uh, you know, it's a short clip that's telling a story for us to try to engage with. And so uh, how do you get your graphics to, 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 eh, to tell a story as well? Uh, you know, are you just posting pictures or, or are you posting uh, engaging graphics to, you know, get your customers to convert and do something? Next slide. So again, uh, if you are posting graphics or pictures, uh, what is the message? Is there an engaging message there? Uh, you know, for an example, with the rim restoration, you know, are your rims scratched and chipped? Uh, you know, I know these guys were running a holiday special and, uh, you know, it shows the before and after. So kind of giving people the visual of, uh, here's what it could look like. Here's what we can do for you. Here's the incentive. Uh, and it's asking that question that you, you, you know, could be asking yourself, you know, uh, do I like the way my, my wheels look on my car? You know, uh, are you one of those close curb parkers that, you know, your, your rims are always scratched up, you know? So it, it's, it's likely the question that, uh, you know, customers sometimes ask themselves, you know, are my rims scratched or chipped? Well, you just made me think about it. Let me go look. Uh, so what's that message? Create a compelling why buy message. Um, ask me a question. What is that question that would cause me to say, hmm, let me think about it. Next slide. 
Uh, videos, uh, make sure that your videos have engaging content. You know, if you're offering incentives, make sure that people see that right away. What is that incentive that, that you're offering? Uh, so just make sure that your video content is engaging, uh, that you keep it within that 15 to 30 second. If you're doing uh, Instagram, Facebook, if you're doing YouTube, which is more of the, uh, the, the long form watchers, uh, then yeah, you, it's, you know, you can go longer uh, and you probably will be able to still uh, engage your audience uh, because they kind of uh, expect that longer form videos on YouTube. Uh, but for Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, you want to keep the video short and sweet, get the message across, uh, give them a reason and an, and an actionable step to take from that point. Next slide. Uh, so here's just some recommendations on uh, size for your videos uh, for YouTube, Facebook, and your website. Uh, you want to keep it at 15 to, to 60 seconds. Uh, you know, uh, as I said, Facebook, you know, your stories, you want to keep that shorter. Uh, your reels, you want to keep that shorter. And you don't want to put uh, a lot of writing and a lot of content on your reels and on your stories. Okay, next slide. Social proof. Do you know what social proof is? When people feel insecure about something, that's when they start looking for validation. They start looking for you to show them that other people trust you. Next slide. Exactly, Gregory, exactly. Uh, social proof is other people saying how awesome you are. Uh, people, people are, uh, well, let, let's not say people, the day and age that we are in now, it, it causes people to be more social engagers. Uh, they look for affirmation from other people. So it's, it's no longer, I'm, I, I may not just be buying, you know, this particular service just because uh, I could be buying too because I know someone else who used you and they said your service was great. Or I'm looking at your e-commerce website and I see all these people buying. Have you seen at the bottom of a website when you're when you're making a purchase and it says Cha Cha from California just purchased three of these? And then you, you're sitting there, you're trying to decide. And then it says, oh, Gregory, uh, you know, from California, just, just purchased another two of these. And then you see uh, a couple seconds later, oh, someone else just purchased one from Florida. I know you've seen that before. You know, you usually see it when you're shopping e-commerce sites uh, that, that you see that, you know, that information there of how people are engaging with the services and solutions that you offer. So what does that do? Well, it's kind of like your virtual salesperson, right? So it's that, it's that, that extra umph, right, digitally, that's helping me to make a decision because now I see, oh shoot, it's working for everybody else. And oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up and get this before everybody in California gets one. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it just helps to add you know, that validation, it conveys trust, conveys authority, uh, and shows your audience that customers are happy with you. Next slide. So a lot of little tips here uh, I was able to pull in for you. Uh, you say you always thought those were made up pop-ups. Uh, well, it's, it's usually, uh, that tied to your purchases or it's tied to when people come into the website and give their information. So now whether there's somebody sitting and just, and that's their, you know, something uh, that they're doing, which shame on them if they're doing that and they just have someone logging in. Uh, but generally with social proof, uh, it's tied into either your uh, checkout screen uh, as people make a purchase, or it could be tied into the home page as people uh, come into your website, just depending on what type of proof you uh, showcase. 
Uh, but quite a bit here of how social proof can help you engage with your uh, customer base. So you'll, you'll have this uh, slide uh, at the end. So I, I know we're getting close to time. Uh, so I don't want to uh, read through all of those, but so many reasons from, you know, uh, things you can do by showing testimonials, uh, sharing that you've got five star reviews across Google and Yelp. Uh, you know, sharing uh, videos, you can connect and uh, embed a video uh, talking about your business, why buy from us, so so many ways uh, you can show social proof, excuse me, not just on your website, uh, but also on social media. Next slide. Customer loyalty programs, yeehaw, this is, uh, this is the big one, right? Uh, so let's go back to you know, our, our marketing uh, focus. How do we get people to our business? How do we get them to engage longer? How do we get them to buy more? How do we get them to come back? And how do we get them to tell somebody else about us, right? So now we're into how do we get them back uh, to our business? If a customer comes to your business, you should have a plan before I even walk in of how are you going to get me back? Next slide. Why would I want to return to your business? There's so many places I can, I can buy shoes. The same shoes, as a matter of fact. There's so many places that I can buy. Why would I keep coming back to you? Think about it. Why would I keep coming back to you? When you go into uh, the, the box retailers, the shoe store, what do they ask you for? They ask you for your information. Would you like to join our loyalty VIP, you know, amazing program that you're going to get all these amazing incentives just for being our amazing customer, right? Why are you not doing that? Why are you not offering those reasons to come back to your business? Because if I came to you once, there was something that you had, there was something about you that I liked. Uh, it wasn't just because I want that shoe, because I could have gotten that shoe anywhere. What is it about you and how are you going to get me to come back? Well, one way you could have me coming back is, is getting a loyalty program in your business. This is critical. And I, you know, if, if you don't have a loyalty program, I advise you to get yourself a loyalty program yesterday so that you can start bringing people back into your business. There's so many ways you can get people back. You can have a digital punch card. Do you remember? Uh, I know I used to go to a yogurt shop uh, all the time. I love yogurt. And so uh, it used to frustrate me because they gave paper, back then they gave paper punch cards. And every time I went into the store, I never had that paper punch card. And so it was, you know, uh, you know buy nine yogurts, you get the 10th one free. And so I, I don't know, somewhere I probably had like a stack of punch cards like this, uh, you know. But now people are on their phones, right? You know, get that digital punch card system and a digital loyalty program right on the phone so that one, it's sure that people have it. And two, it's giving them an incentive to come back to your business in a way that they're used to doing business on their phone. Okay, uh, so uh, whatever, loyalty program is right for your business. If you're a fitness center, you may want to do uh, VIP or membership points. Uh, restaurants, you may want to do digital punch cards. Uh, it really depends on your business. You know, you're more than welcome if, if you need ideas of ways to uh, bring customers back into your business, please, by all means, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, send me an email and say, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, and, and I'll, I'll let you know, you know, if I, you know, if I see an up, uh, you know, an area where I think you could be driving, uh, higher conversions within your loyalty strategy, I'll let you know. Next slide. 
So there are so many loyalty programs out there. Do a little bit of research as to which one is best for you. One that I've used uh, is, uh, is the privacy uh, focused loyalty program. And so it just depends on your business. People are changing, you know, uh, just a few years ago, people were okay with giving you their information for loyalty based incentives. Uh, and, and now, depending on the industry you're in, sometimes people don't want to give you that information. They just want to show up and say, hey, you know, I'm in your loyalty program. Give me my incentives. Give me my discounts. Uh, I don't want you to remark it to me. I just want my discounts. Uh, so it depends on uh, what you feel is the right loyalty program for your business uh, and, 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 you know, how you want to get them back. Do you know, do you want punch cards? Do you want a membership based program? Do you want scratch and wins, digital scratch and wins? There's so many solutions, but you, you want to start thinking about what services do you offer in your business that people would want to come back for a second time. You know, um, here, uh, here's uh, something to think about if you're in a business that's not transactional, right? A question you probably ask is, so I'm a tax accounting firm. How do I get people to come back? Well, you're dealing with B2B, uh, B2B and B2C. Well, if I'm B2B, you're a tax accounting firm and you've got my, uh, my tax uh, business uh, for the year, I do my filings with you. Uh, why not reach out and see if I'm in need of a bookkeeper, right? Why not reach out and see if I'm in need of some uh, consulting, financial planning? Uh, so, so many reasons to get me back into your business. And even with that loyalty program, you can incentivize me to come back. Chacha, thanks for being our customer. Uh, hey, we've got a special going on bookkeeping services. Uh, you know, get this uh, free offering if you give us a try with bookkeeping services or 10% off your first month. Uh, so many ways that you can still get a customer back, even if your business isn't transactional and introduce new products to me at the same time or to a customer. Next slide. Reputation management. Uh, so uh, I hope everyone here has claimed their Google My Business uh, page. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you do that right away. You don't want someone else to claim your business because it becomes, uh, you know, a whole chore trying to get your, your business back if someone else claims it. Uh, and, you know, there are unfortunately scammers out there that will do those kinds of things. And, and then, you know, you'll have a difficult time trying to claim your business which is critical, right? Because if people start searching Google and they're looking for, you know, the Italian restaurant, uh, you know, near me and you don't own your Google My Business page, you're not going to show up in the search. So you want to make sure that uh, you claim your Google My Business page and that you keep an eyeball and you check it. Check it every month. Make sure you post content, uh, you know, on your Google My Business page. Post incentives there because uh, when people are out and about, they may do that. Hey, Siri, what's near me? And you want to make sure that, you know, your, your profile is there. And also this is where that SEO, search engine optimization, also comes into play uh, with helping you to be found in that search as well because you have keywords that are relevant to that search. Um, along with your social media. Uh, so uh, reputation management is important. Uh, people are looking, uh, and, and Gregory, you know, mentioned this, that uh, people want to know what other people think about you. And so if you know this is how you engage, this is how your customers engage, uh, make sure you're encouraging people to leave a review. Encourage them to tell other people about you and make sure you thank them. For it. Next slide. Uh, so another solution that I use that has helped me tremendously uh, is the Small Biz Pro app. And so it helped me to uh, keep everything organized. And so uh, to give you an idea, I actually was able to uh, secure a, a bid that I went out for, you know, for my business because I was able to get information out quick that was needed. 
I, I probably was one of the first folks when I saw it open, like, boom, there's my stuff. Uh, and so I like having things organized. It, it helps you to organize your focus. And when you start getting into your profit planning, your cash flow cycle, all things to help you stay focused on running a profitable business and making sure that you understand what your expenses are in relation to uh, what you're bringing in and what you're selling. Next slide. Uh, so turning leads to contacts to sales, uh, you know, we've got a lot of things that we've talked about today. Uh, start utilizing some of these things so that you can turn more of your, your, you know, potential base into sales and more of your customer base into repeat business. Next slide. So refining your process. We, we've gone through a lot. Here's some things to think about this evening, this week, uh, you know, as you go through planning the rest of this year, because remember, uh, you've got a lot of sale days coming up. You've got Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve. What a winning, winning, winning uh, number of holidays and sale days to take advantage of. So now that we've gone through this, start rethinking about how can I drive 50% more sales from, uh, from my current base, from customers that enter into my website, into my business and put feet on the ground. What is that strategy to get them back again? Because they will come back if you incentivize them to come back. So understand and define your market, your competition, Understand your newly defined customer, right? Because you probably now have a new idea of who your customer is and how to target them. Define your niche. What is your niche? Who are you selling to? And come up with a strong marketing message. What is that reason why they should buy from you? Determine which markets are best for you. Uh, is your product best for TikTok? You know, or are you a Facebook? Uh, it, you know, is your audience more of the Facebook crowd? It depends on the type of business you're in. Uh, so, you know, are you marketing to the younger audience? Then TikTok may be your your audience. Are you marketing to uh, the more professional group? LinkedIn may be your, your target uh, uh, focus. Organize your marketing tools. Set some smart sales goals. Determine your marketing budget. This is going to get you ready for profit planning, right? I don't want you to walk into the next workshop and you don't have this ready. My goodness, they're going to say, what did you do in the marketing workshop? Uh, so make sure that you, you think about this, that you have those budgets ready. You know, if it's going to cost you, uh, you know, to do Facebook ads, if it's going to cost you $500 for a month of Facebook ads, uh, you know, if you're going to give away promotional product as people come into your store, you know, how much are you going to give away? If you're doing a trade show and you're giving away pens and they're only 50 cents each, so what? How many are you giving away and what is that going to cost? What is that expense, you know, to your business? Next slide. So this is where all of these things that you've, you've worked on today is going to help you understand profit planning and your cash flow cycle. Uh, next slide. Uh, so your, your marketing efforts, you know, directly correlate uh, with your profit planning. And again, if you do not understand your expenses, what your products cost uh, to get into the market, uh, it's, it's easy for you to uh, erode profit out of your business quickly. And I don't want that to happen to you. Uh, I want you to have this cohesive plan that you know, you know what your profit is going to be on, on every sale. Okay. If you choose to discount your products, you know, uh, you know, that's your choice and you'll know that, Hey, here's my, here's my bottom line. So uh, with the, with the profit planning, uh, Make sure that you have these things in mind when you get to the next uh, when you get to the next workshop. So have uh, have written down what your solutions are, okay? What products or services you offer? Uh, have a profit goal set. 
create uh, yourself a preliminary budget uh, and list out what those expenses are. Next slide. Uh, the longer your, your working capital cycle, the longer it's going to take you to achieve that healthy cash flow cycle. Uh, so again, uh, when you get into your next workshop, by having these things ready, uh, it'll help move you towards uh, understanding how to get to that positive cash flow cycle. Next slide. So for starters, uh, I want to I want to make sure that you're ready when you go out to your next uh, meeting or your networking event and you're talking to people. Uh, you're not pulling out a paper business card that someone's going to throw away and they forget about you as soon as you walk away. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, you all joining us for the marketing workshop uh, this evening. Uh, and so uh, if you jump onto Google and Yelp and share your review of what you thought of uh, the marketing workshop and uh, you know this series that the Los Angeles Urban League is, is offering to business owners, please share that review. I hope I've earned your five-star review. And just as a thank you, everyone who leaves a review, I'll be sending you over uh, a digital QR business card for your business. Uh, so next up in the workshop, next slide. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We, I, I always got to leave you with this. I, I you know, this is a, a question that I ask a lot too is, uh, what business are you in? And, uh, and everyone always says, well, I'm in the car business or I'm in the retail business. I'm in the e-commerce business. I'm in the pet business, whatever it is. Have you thought about you're, you're actually in the technology business because your customers are online. Your customers are on their phone. They're on the web. Uh, you're no longer the business that you thought you were. You are now, uh, your business is driven by technology and everything that you do now, you have to incorporate. How do I bring that innovation and that technology into my business? So uh, you're not just a brick and mortar store anymore. You're, uh, you're a technology company uh, to a degree. Uh, you have an online store, you have a virtual audience. Next slide. So getting ready for the next workshop series. Uh, I hope you, you know, took some notes and you're ready for Gloria on November 9th so you can start getting paid properly. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you, you understand uh, how to get paid properly and, and making sure that you have your marketing, marketing plan in place uh, and that you also bring to that workshop, uh, you know, the solutions, uh, what your expenses are, what it's going to take to get that product into market and, and just kind of a budget of what, what you're thinking here going into the remainder of the year. So I wish you all the most success uh, this holiday season. I'm going to be looking to hear from you all about the amazing sales that you had. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to also checking everyone's uh, business here in the chat so I can, so I can learn more about your businesses and, if there's anything I can help you with, I am always here. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Thank you to uh, the Los Angeles Urban League and the SBA for allowing me to, to share this time and, and help you with uh, marketing tips. Thank you, Chacha. This has been a wonderful seminar. Uh, thank you for all the wisdom and insights that you shared. Um, we do have a couple of questions that were submitted by Mr. Gregory Sneed. So I, I thought in the little bit of time that we had left, we could at least address some of the queries that he posted. Uh, one was, is there a software program that you recommend to help document the customer journey or user experiences in an attractive presentation? Uh, in an attractive presentation to do what with? Gregory, are, are you doing a presentation to share with uh, potential investors or customers uh, just so that you understand? Give me a little bit of uh, info what you mean by that. Okay. And so while Gregory types his, uh, the, the sales process, so I understand that's what he responded. Uh, the sales process? Okay. So, uh, so again, what I use uh, is Thrive. Uh, Thrive helps me with the sales process because it helps me understand where my customer is in that journey. 
Um, so I'm able to see when they come into my CRM, I'm able to see what they're doing uh, while they're in the, you know, while they're in uh, my database. Are they purchasing? Uh, how often they're purchasing? Um, you know, and again, giving me a way to remarket back to those customers right within that tool. Uh, but also I can run reports and, and uh, analytical reports from that. Is that what you're saying? That I then bring into uh, outside presentations that I'm doing. Is that what you mean? Uh, he typed documenting the journey, the flow and decision stages. Okay. Uh, so documenting the flow, uh, Gregory, I'll have to connect with you offline to get a little bit more details of what it is that you're wanting to do with this in, uh, information so I can best advise you. Uh, so I'll circle back to you on that one. Okay. And then Gregory also submitted one very interesting question, which is, can email signatures be too busy and particularly so busy that they flag spam filters and get trapped by those same filters? Yes, they can. Uh, they can be, um, too busy. You know, it's, you want to narrow down the focus. What is, what message is it that you want the customer to focus on? Uh, is it that, you know, you want them to, you know, jump into your social media? Uh, is it that you want them to know that you offer a special training course? Uh, but yes, it can be too busy. And uh, yes, you can, it can flag if you've got way too much uh, going on within that signature. Yep. And I assume that includes signatures with gifts? Uh, so it just depends. Uh, it depends on how, you know, if you, if you have a gift signature, uh, then yeah, you can, you can add whatever you want to add into that signature, but just know uh, you're going to create busyness for the customer. So is the customer going to engage with, uh, you know, if you have a hundred things in, in that, you know, signature, will they engage? Some people want to have those things there just because, um, you know, for an example, the, uh, the chamber on their signature, they want it to have all those things there because uh, these are the areas they want people to know about and want people to engage in. Uh, so yeah, you can, it, it just depends on what you want the customer to focus on. You know, you can even embed a video uh, into your signature. It just depends on the type of business uh, you're in and what your goal is with the signature. Okay. So I can get some more info on that and in, in, uh, different ways to keep from uh, hitting the spam boxes. One final question also from Gregory. Are there any specific CRM programs that you would recommend, Cha Cha? Uh, so that was uh, what we talked about. Again, uh, it depends on what you want to use. I've used Zoho. Uh, I've used HubSpot. Uh, the one that I'm using uh, now is uh, called Thrive. Uh, and again, that one is uh, very user friendly for me and my business. Uh, and so that's the one that I'm using because it allows me to do text campaigns, email campaigns. Uh, it provides me with analytics uh, all within the software. So that's the one I use, but I have used Zoho in the past. Okay. And then one final question, and then we'll let everybody uh, kind of get on with their evenings. But uh, Ms. Anderson asked a question about whether Shasha, you could share a list of companies that provide customer loyalty programs. Uh, yeah, I'll get that over to you, Ken, and, and you can share, or if everyone that wants that information, drop their uh, contact in the chat here. I'll make sure to get that over to you uh, along with the presentation. All right, Th thank you very much for all your questions for, for, to all the audience members. Cha-Cha, thank you again for leading a fantastic uh, uh, webinar for everyone. Obviously, this is a topic of great interest and hopefully everyone uh, understands and, and can implement everything that they've heard this evening and ultimately use that to create more revenues and build stronger companies. So again, thank you everyone for joining today's session. I look forward to having you all participate in our next session next week. Again, five o'clock on Wednesday and the topic will be product pricing. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to email myself, uh, ken.allen at laul.org or my colleague, Ty Umo, ty.umazamaryoh at laul.org.
And uh, again, thank you all for participating in tonight's session. And we look forward to uh, seeing you guys on the next seminar. Have a great evening. Take care. Thanks bye -bye. so much, everyone. Bye-bye.